we're called, sometimes we get caught up and think that we're called to have these great moments where we realize something, we've done something wonderful for God. But there's many moments in our day-to-day -day lives where we can do things that we're not even aware of. To get the point across, there's a story I came across that I'd like to read to you, because if I paraphrase, paraphrase it, I might miss something important. But it's a story about a cab driver. It says he was a night shift taxi cab driver who on a late August night picked up a woman. He was responding to a call from a small brick complex in a quiet part of town. And he assumed that, as usual, he was being sent to pick up some hungover partiers or someone who just had a fight with a lover or a worker heading to an early shift in the industrial part of the town. When he arrived at 2.30 a.m., the building was dark, except for a single light in a ground floor window. Now, under the circumstances, most drivers would just honk once or twice, wait a minute, and then drive away. But this cabbie was different. He had seen too many impoverished people who depended on taxis as their only means of transportation or people who needed assistance. So he got out, walked to the door, and knocked. Just a minute, answered a frail elderly voice. He could hear something being dragged across the floor. And after a long pause, the door opened. There was a small woman in her 80s bearing a blueprint dress and a pillbox hat with a veil pinned on it, looking for all the world like somebody out of the 1940s movie. But her side, by her side was a small nylon suitcase. He got a glimpse of the apartment that looked as if no one had lived in it for years. The furniture was covered with sheets. There were no clocks, knickknacks, or utensils on the counters. In the corner was a cardboard box filled with photos and glassware. Would you carry my bag to the car, the woman asked. So he took the suitcase to the cab, then returned to assist the woman, who took his arm as they walked slowly to the curb. When they got into the cab, she gave him an address, then asked, could you drive through downtown? It's not the shortest way, he answered. Oh, I don't mind, she said. I'm in no hurry. I'm on my way to a hospice. When he looked into the rearview mirror, he noticed her eyes were glistening. I don't have any family left, she continued. The doctor says I don't have very long. The cabbie then quietly reached over and shut off the meter. What route would you like to take, he asked. For the next two hours, they drove through the city. She showed him the building where she had once worked as an elevator operator. They drove through the neighborhood where she and her husband had lived when they were newlyweds. They pulled up in front of a furniture warehouse that had once been a ballroom where she had gone dancing as a girl. Sometimes she'd asked the cabbie to slow down in front of a particular building or corner and would sit staring into the darkness, saying nothing. At the first hint of sun was lightning, lighting up the horizon, she suddenly said, I'm tired, let's go now. They drove in silence to a small convalescent home. Two orderlies came out to the cab. They were solicitous and intent, watching her every move. They were obviously expecting her. The cabbie opened the trunk and took the small suitcase to the door. The woman was already seated in a wheelchair. How much do I owe you, she asked. Reaching into her purse, nothing, he said. You have to make a living, she protested. There are other passengers, he responded. Almost without thinking, he bent over and gave her a hug. She held him tightly. You gave an old woman a little moment of joy, she said. Thank you. He squeezed her hand and then walked into the dim morning light. Behind him, a door shut. It was the sound of the closing of a life. And now he finishes the story in his own words. I didn't pick up any more passengers that shift. 
I drove aimlessly, lost in thought. For the rest of that day, I could hardly talk. What if that woman had gotten an angry driver, or one who was impatient to end his shift? What if I had refused to take the run, or had honked once, then driven away? On a quick review, I don't think that I have ever done anything more important in my life. Then he added a capsule of this homily. He said, we're conditioned to think that our lives revolve around great moments, but truly great moments often can catch us unaware, beautifully wrapped in what others may consider a small one. Transformation is our goal in Lent. With God's grace, it's the small acts that get us there. Sometimes we want to do great things, but we never know. The kindness that this cab driver showed touched a woman forever. And we need to remember that same thing, that the goodness we show, the kindness to an, to a, an anonymous person, to someone nobody even knows, can be a great act of charity and love that God sees and can have a huge difference in a person's life. The year of mercy, the works of mercy, are so important for us to know and to do so that when we have opportunities, we can be like the cab driver and do what is right at the moment. He didn't make any money that night, but he made something far, far more precious. And so we too, we could probably all tell some similar stories like that, where someone's life was touched by what we inadvertently did. Um, and, and it's good for us to keep in mind to look for those moments, the small moments, to help us do what is good. 